I'm Tuffy Stone, and this is my backyard brisket. This brisket is a Chairman's Reserve Choice brisket. It weighs about 19 pounds before I take a knife to it. There's a lot of ways that we could trim this brisket. We could trim this brisket competition style. I'm going into a hushed tone. That means because I'm telling you a secret. When I'm doing a competition style brisket, I separate the point from the flat. A, a whole pack or a whole brisket, which is the chest of a cow, is made up of two muscles. We've got the point here and we've got the flat here. There's actually a seam of fat that separates these two muscles. And so when I am doing competition barbecue, it's about six bites of food, trying to make six judges happy. So it's a very wasteful way of uh, trimming meat because I would take so much uh, of this meat away for a competition style trim. When we're cooking at home and we're feeding our family or friends or having a, uh, a social gathering, we don't want to waste any of this meat. Today though, I'm going to do a brisket that would be, a, as my father used to say, a crowd pleaser. It's going to be a brisket that's a good eating brisket. It would be certainly good to serve in a restaurant and certainly in your backyard. So let's get to trimming this. One thing I will tell you, you can see on the, on the flat, the grain is running this way. To get the best chew for brisket, when that meat's done cooking, we want to slice against the grain. So one cut you're going to see me cut is right here. And I call it the toe of the flat, but basically that cut is perpendicular to the grain itself. So once I rub it, smoke it, do all the things I'm gonna do to it tomorrow, I've got a visual that helps me understand uh, how to slice this brisket to get the best chew because slicing against the grain after it's cooked will give a more tender chew. I'm gonna trim the hard fat here in this channel. I could keep working it all the way to where I separate these muscles almost, but I'm just gonna do a light trim on this. We're gonna remove some silver skin Sometimes it's easy just to take your hand and put it underneath the brisket flat and lift up. That little curve can make it easier just to cut away the membrane or the fat. The goal with the flat here is to get all this meat exposed. We're gonna leave the fat cap for the most part underneath it intact. I did cut a little bit off because it was humped over here. I wanna try and make this brisket about as even as possible so that they'll cook evenly. So to go over how I've trimmed this, I've taken most of the fat and most of the membrane off of the flat. There's a little bit there, but you'll see during the cooking process that fat that's still there will render out and it'll eat well, it'll look fine. I made a cut right here that is perpendicular to the grain of the flat that'll help me understand which way to slice. So now that I've trimmed my brisket, I'm just gonna put a light coat of olive oil uh, on it all the way around. I'm gonna start with the meat side, flip it over, and then do the fat side. And the reason for that is I wanna season the fat side first. So when I'm done oiling it, the fat side will be up and ready to be seasoned. Today we're using my classic barbecue rub. If you want, you could just use salt and pepper, salt and pepper and garlic, whatever you rub you like, but this is great on brisket. Brisket's a thick, heavy cut of meat. Like I always say, the bigger the cut, the more rub, the longer we let it sit on there. I'm gonna do a heavy rub on there to where the meat just disappears. I am on purpose gonna use about half as much rub on the point as I do in the flat because uh, of the intermuscular fat that's inside the point. I find sometimes if I, if I were to put the same amount of rub on the point as I do the flat, it gets a bit salty. So I, I did a heavy coat on the flat, all sides. I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator. You can put it in your cooler. We want it to sit on there for about eight hours. So it's gonna sit on there overnight. All right, so last night I trimmed my brisket. It's a Chairman's Reserve. It was about 19 pounds before I took a knife to it. Anyways, still a large cut of beef. Always remember, the, the bigger the cut of meat, the more rub you put on it and the longer you let that rub sit on there before you put it on the smoker. If it's a smaller, thinner cut, less rub, less time. The reason for that is most rubs have salt in them. We want to get flavor development, but we don't want it on there so long that the, the salt actually cooks or cures the meat. So anyways, with my classic barbecue rub, my Tuffy Stone classic barbecue rub, 
eight hours is the perfect amount of time. All right, so my brisket's ready to get on the smoker. I'm cooking it on a bullet smoker today. I've got my uh, temperature set at 275 degrees. It's gonna take about seven and a half, eight hours to cook this. All right, my smoker's ready. My brisket's ready to go on. Time to get it on the smoker. I feel lonely with every step that I take. I don't feel good and my body starts to shake. I fell in love with a girl I haven't seen her met. So All right, so this is my Weber Smoky Mountain bullet style. This is the 22 inch. I'm cooking it on the top rack. There's no water in my diffuser pan. I'm, I'm using it dry. My target temperature today is gonna to be about 275 degrees. I've got briquettes with a few chunks of hickory wood. So our brisket's been on for one hour. We've been cooking at about 275, 285 degrees on the bullet smoker. I'm gonna come in now, open the lid, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of melted butter on top of it. You'll see after it cooks a little bit longer, how it just makes the exterior of the meat just really nice. It's something that I do in competition barbecue. I think it can help elevate your, your barbecue in the backyard as well. So my brisket's been on now for an hour and a half. After it was on there for one hour, I just put a little butter on it. It's been cooking another 30 minutes. I'm gonna miss with apple juice now. I'm gonna spritz every 30 minutes till it has four hours of smoke or has the color that I'm looking for. My brisket's been on the smoker for four hours. Just to recap, I put it on there with the pit cooking at 275 degrees, cooked it for one hour, hit it with a little butter after that. Then I started spraying every 30 minutes with apple juice till now. It's been on the smoker for four hours and it's now time to do what we call wrapping the brisket or the Texas crutch. So the way I prepare my aluminum foil for wrapping my brisket is I'm gonna tear off two sheets. I, I need it to be uh, longer than the brisket and I'm gonna tear two off, lay them on top of each other and then I'm gonna crimp one edge together to hinge it so that when I fold it out, it's twice as wide. So I've got my aluminum foil ready to go. I'm gonna go to the smoker and get my brisket. And I'm just gonna lay it right down here in the center. Been cooking for four hours, about 275. It's got a beautiful mahogany brown color right now. I've got the right amount of smoke on it. It's smelling really good to me. Now is an interesting time where if we had any area that was a little bit crispy, I could just spritz it really good with apple juice. So I'm, I'm gonna miss my brisket, wrap it back up, put it back on my smoker and cook it until it's tender. So my brisket's been on about six and a half hours in total, two and a half hours after I wrapped it. I'm gonna check it and see if it's close to being done. The temperature that I'm looking for when I cook at 275 degrees is normally around 205 to 207 degrees Fahrenheit. So my camera guy thinks I cheated. It was exactly 207. It's right where I wanted it to be. So we're gonna pull it off now, open it up, let it vent and let it start to rest. It scared me. So the brisket was temping at 207. Uh, temperature is important when you're cooking barbecue and brisket, but it's also about feel too. So, you know, not only was it temping at a number that I felt like was going to be the doneness that I was looking for, but more importantly, it was how that, that, that probe on this thermometer slid in. If there was any kind of resistance at all, and you really had to push to get that thermometer in, that brisket's not done yet. Most of the people, when they cook a brisket for the first time, they undercook it because they've been cooking that brisket for hours and hours and hours. And uh, eventually you think, man, surely it should be done. And, and it's just not. I have this analogy when it comes to cooking large cuts of meat, specifically brisket. And, and the analogy is like a train. When a train is standing still and it starts to go forward, it's like, and it's really slow. And as it starts to build up a little bit of momentum, it's like a chick, 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 chick. And then it continues to get faster. 
brisket's the same way. When we take this brisket out of a refrigerator, which is probably 40 degrees Fahrenheit or cooler, and we take that cold piece of meat and we put it on our smoker, that internal meat temperature is gonna be very slow to rise and escalate. But as it starts to get warmer, it's gonna to start to, uh, that internal temperature is gonna to start to move along at a faster pace. We're gonna get up to about 160, 165 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna have what is referred to as a stall happen. This stall can be very unnerving for a first time brisket uh, cooker, making your very first one. And time and temperature are gonna get us through that stall because once it gets up to about 170, 175 degrees, it's gonna start chugging along again and that train is gonna start uh, to pick up speed. Another thing to watch as it gets through that stall, it starts to cook a little bit faster. So you need to like set a timer and check your meat, you know, maybe every 20 or 30 minutes for doneness. Um, I'd rather catch it too soon than to catch it too late and for that brisket to get overcooked. So I'm gonna let this brisket rest. Uh, the bigger the cut, the longer the rest. The smaller the cut, the shorter the rest. It's a simple bell graph. As this brisket starts to rest and cool down a little bit, it's gonna improve in quality. And what we wanna do is we wanna catch it before it starts to dip back down. How do we rest it and where do we rest it and how long do we rest it? Well, today, uh, you know, it's not that cold out. And so I can just let this brisket sit on this table, uh, ambient temperature, and let it rest and it'll be just fine. But if we were cooking in the winter and it was super cold, I might wanna put it in a cooler and wrap it in a towel and rest it in a warm environment. So I always think about the weather when I'm cooking, especially outdoors. You know, I'm thinking about how cold is it? How hot is it? Is it windy or not? But today we're gonna to take this brisket and, and let it just rest right here on this table. So having said all that, I, I have to take a look. I wanna see what it's looking like. So I'm gonna open the full, take my thermometer, stick it around in a few spots, make sure it feels good everywhere. All right, I think we did good today. Let's just take it off the side and let it rest a little bit, cool down. We'll come back here, make some slices, see what we think. So I took the brisket off. It was, it was to the doneness that I was looking for. I, I opened it up and I let it vent for maybe 20, 30 minutes, and then I closed it back up. But now we're gonna uh, take it to the board and slice it and see how it goes. Just a little tips and trick. There's all this beautiful au jus in here. Um, I have fat separators that I'll use. Pour that in there, just get the juice, remove the fat. Sometimes it can be a nice little uh, condiment to go with the brisket uh, in competition, hushed tone. Sometimes we'll brush those slices just to give it a little sheen and a little pop of flavor. So we've got the flat, we've got the point. I'm just gonna take uh, my knife and cut the point to remove it. We can make burn-ins from that and then we'll get slices from the flat. So if you've been watching this video from the beginning, you saw I made a cut right here that was perpendicular to the grain of this brisket. That's just a visual to make sure that I slice against the grain, repeating myself. This brisket's gonna have a better chew if we slice it against the grain. All right, so I've made some slices. It's slicing nice, it's got good flavor. There was no injections in this. It was just, you know, my classic barbecue rub, uh, a smidgen of olive oil, smoked it for four hours. After the first hour, hit it with some butter, then started spraying it with apple juice every 30 minutes after that. After four hours, wrapped it in uh, aluminum foil doing the Texas Crutch. I've got some uh, cube point here. If you want to do some uh, burn-ins, just hit it with a little bit of sauce put them back on the cooker just to briefly set the sauce. I'm Tuffy Stone and this is my backyard brisket.